And hello and welcome back to the Only Single Player Forum here at, you guessed it, Only Single Player. Uh, I'm Justin, with me is Reagan, and uh, today we're going to be talking about, talking about consoles, uh, specifically the new, the I, I, I keep calling them next generation, but you really can't call them next generation anymore. They're, they're, the, they're the current generation now. It's a, it's a hard switch, because I was, ho- I was mm-hmm. talking about that when, like, when they first came out and everyone was still calling it next gen. I was like, yeah, it's not really next gen. We need to stop calling that. But it's hard when everyone else calls it next gen. So you're like, if I say current gen, are they going to know what I'm talking about? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard for me to to call like the 360 last gen, you know, because mm-hmm. that's that's basically the console I've spent the most time ever on. I, I don't own an uh, Xbox One or a PS4 uh, just because you know I don't really need one right now. There are games coming out, but. Uh, if I were to get one, I'd probably get the Xbox because I've come from 360 and I'm familiar with Xbox Live and all that. Um, do you have either of the, those two consoles? Yeah, I have the PS4, but I okay. haven't used it like since launch. So, mm, but but even if you didn't have either, you'd probably pick a PS4. Well, clearly, yeah, you pick yeah. PS4. Yeah. So, like, I feel like what what are your reasons? For PS4 exclusives, um, yeah, it's games because the only reason I'd even play on a console is just the exclusive games, and they're just not there for the Xbox. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, I'm not really a big stickler like exclusive games. Like if it's if it's, I've never really gotten behind exclusive games like that to to make me want to have one or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stick with Xbox. It's, you know why not? But uh. I mean, if or I could, or if by then I build a new PC, then I don't, I wouldn't give two craps. So right, <laughs> but um, I think that's probably the theme of this next generation, if we want to call it, is that the the PC master race generation, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty much every generation, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, well, N sixty four, no, yeah, not yeah, necessarily. Get... Like way back, no, but now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's the the current consoles being the PS four and Xbox One, they spec wise, mm-hmm. you know, with with the power of the machine, there's they cannot compete with the PC. Right. Well, and it used um, to be that the advantage was of a console, you could just stick the cartridge or the disc in your console and be playing the game. And right. whereas and now on consoles PC, you'd can't have to even do that and do all the DRM codes and all that, but you can't do that on a. It's the same as it is on a PC, so they're just handicapped PCs basically. Pretty much, and what we've seen them try to do to combat this is like they know they can't. They're competing with these PCs. They know that. Excuse me. They know that they they can't just get in there with games alone mm-hmm. uh, anymore. So that's why they're doing all this. You know, they're trying to make it more of a uh, platform for media. It's like a sort of a medium to the internet, basically, yeah. is what they want it to be. So they, you know, they're throwing all this other crap that isn't game related onto uh, the consoles. Like you know, Xbox has their Xbox Store, which they've change like all over the time like every other year right they change the xbox store P- uh, playstation 4 has their own like television service coming out soon now so yeah. uh that's what they're trying to do to stay relevant yeah. but and we we kind of saw with the launch of the xbox one that they were trying to be this like all-in-one media thing where they wanted yeah, yeah. they wanted to have control of your tv basically they wanted to be the one box hooked to mm-hmm. your tv but they didn't account for smart tvs first off because smart TVs can do everything an Xbox can do other <laughs> than much. play games. And they also shot themselves in the foot by not making it backwards compatible. So you have to have a 360 mm-hmm. hooked into your TV anyway as well. So That's a, that sort of ties in a little bit to another topic that uh, you and I are probably about to talk about. Is that mm-hmm. The backwards compra- compatibility really, really... It, it was good and bad. It's bad because everybody hates it, but it's good because now everybody's going to make more money off of remastered games. Right. Um, that's another issue, though. But, yeah, they. it just seems like when they announced these consoles, it just didn't seem like they took the steps forward. No, it, it to, was not me. a very forward-thinking like, thing. It just doesn't make sense. And now I think they're really going to pay for it in the coming years because I don't know... Like, PC's already growing faster than the current consoles are. Yeah. And so the 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 steps that PC are ahead are getting even greater. And now, uh, you know, Valve's going to come take over the world with uh, their Steam machines. Right, which still haven't even launched yet. So that's, nope. I mean, it's, it's, and it's not It's going to be even, like 20 of them. Yeah. And another thing I was talking about the other day is that the games just aren't 
there on this next generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And instead of like using technology, the new technology to kind of enhance the way we interact with the worlds in the game, which is what yeah. they should be doing. There's no leaps and bounds in actual gameplay anymore. Right. It's the, They're not using the new technology to make new gameplay. They're using it to make pretty graphics and have the performance of the game. Yeah, and yeah, and the stuff we get now are broken on release. Needs day one patches, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, like what you're saying about exclusives, and we said this before, you know, uh, the Xbox One particularly do- doesn't really have any exclusives anymore because most of them already come to PC. Um, you know, Dead Rising and uh, Rise and whatever else. So it's just not looking good, <laughs> honestly. I mean, people are buying them. Uh, I'm I plan on buying one of them, uh, to be honest. But like, it's it's not looking too great, uh, especially with you know PCs doing or PCs already you know miles ahead, uh, hardware wise. Um, Steam machines coming to dominate the markets. Who knows when. Um, it's, it's kind of scary. And I feel like, you, you know, you know, steam's going to get it or valve's going to get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah. That's what they, they, they're going to, perf- it's going to be the perfect thing. <laughs> um, well, and the, the other thing I was talking about the other day is when you look at like the PS2, a year after the launch of the PS2, we had like genre defining classic mm-hmm. games. We had silent Hill two metal gear, solid two devil may cry, grand theft auto three. I mean, like, Games that are still having an influence in the industry to this day, what does the PS4 have? It has Killzone, mm-hmm. Shadowfall, and The Order. That's pretty much and, it. And, and TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's The games just aren't there, and they're not... Devs aren't using new technology to innovate. They're just making the same games and making them slightly prettier. At the end of the day, that's like what is going to make it. You know, games, you can't... Mm-hmm. As you can shove all this other crap in there, sure, but like if I if I can't play the games, I need to play the right way, or whatever. It's just not gonna it's not gonna work out, right? Um, and it's kind of scary because like I don't know, something's gonna come and like trump these current Xboxes. Like that's that's my that's what I'm seeing. Like something something, like either PC is just gonna own, own the world, or like some a new console or something is gonna come out and just. It's, they won't be able to compete. They won't be able to compete, or they'll just start pumping consoles out every other year, right? Which is also pretty scary. I mean, <laughs> which yeah, which is this new uh, Nintendo NX announcement is something mm. I'm kind of worried about. Um, because I'm I'm hoping that Nintendo isn't just responding to the criticism that oh the Wii U's underpowered now, and just trying to throw out another yeah machine that's less powerful than a PC that devs are just going to use for the same games again because Mm -hmm. the wii u it has a unique control scheme it can do different things that's using new technology in a way that improves the way we play games instead of just having pretty graphics Mm -hmm. well i mean that that's that's another thing nintendo does does really well with their consoles is that each console has brings a new gameplay experience to the table they don't have there hasn't been two nintendo consoles that have the same controller right um, at launch, uh, you know, the Wii was this big thing that everybody can get behind because it was motion control. Whoa! Yeah. And what they did for the Wii U was take what was best selling for them was their mo- handheld, and mm-hmm. they slapped that with the console. Yeah. And they patched it together. Now uh, we don't know much about the NX announcement from no. Nintendo. They haven't really said what it is or anything. So it could be a new handheld, could be right. a new console, could be who knows what. Um, but they've made it very very clear and this is going to make us very disappointed because we we want to see them become a third party developer but they've been very very clear that they want to stick with developing hardware yeah and and i'm okay with that as long as it brings something new to the table i don't want to see them throw out their ps4 i don't want to see them throw out a console with a, a slick modern controller that doesn't do anything new so as long as it's something interesting something that i haven't seen before i'm fine with it but Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope they aren't just following uh, the trend. Yeah, and just trying to keep up. Yeah, basically right. trying to keep up. Right now, they're they're not doing too well. Um, but they they on a side note, Nintendo has some good games coming out this year as well. So yeah, they've they've been on an upturn for well, and for a uh, bit. I I think it was Kirby Canvas Curse just came out like last week for the Wii U. So there's still high profile first party games coming out for it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We just had, like, a huge Mario season. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, Mario, Mario Party, games. that too. That came out oh, this yeah, week. Oh, yeah, Mario Party came out this week. Yep, yep. that's right. 
Yeah, so, I mean, th- th- some games are coming out. Nintendo's good about their games. They they know how to make good games. Mm-hmm. It's the same three good games over and over and over, but, you know. Right. They're still fun. <laughs> and, well, and nobody's nobody's doing it any better. Nobody's making That's true. That's better true. Zelda games than they do. Nobody's making better Mario games than they do. So I don't I don't have a problem with them doing the same thing, but when it's like a third person cover based shooter and it's just everybody making that and there's already games that are better than it in the same genre and mm-hmm. they don't bring anything mm-hmm. new to the table, that's what I have a problem with. Yeah. And plus that's... Th- there's no other company that releases games with the level of polish that Nintendo does. Yeah. Well see, that's another thing as well that I wanted to mention because Nintendo has a they they are also a publisher, of course, like uh-huh. Sony and Microsoft. They they are they have their own publishing studios, just like EA, Ubisoft, whoever. Yeah. And but Nintendo's everything is like a hundred percent in house. Like it's most of the most of their you know quality things is like Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. Yeah. There are other studios, but they are all they're all on a Nintendo. Same way, like you know, Bioware is owned by EA. Right. Um, Microsoft and Sony don't really have very good relationships with developers. Yeah. I mean, they have they've had developers under their belt, et cetera, in the past. Blah blah blah. Bioware was used to be strictly with Microsoft, but mm. and um, rare as well. Rare's yeah, yeah. Still with them. Where, but the these big publishers they really like dominate. They 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 the fate of the consoles almost is in the publishers' hands nowadays. Mm-hmm. But the publishers aren't going to make anything exclusive. They're just going to get their money. Right. Um, cause we, you know, we see Ubisoft, EA, they, they're, they're pumping out like 50% of the games of a year almost. Yeah, definitely. It's so it, it, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, market. And I don't, I don't want to say market more like of a, just a weird like space in general. It is. Yeah. There's different like sex uh-huh. of, of a uh, video game ness. Right. And I can't, <laughs> I can't really think of any other industry where the most major product releases is something that tons of other huge companies are going to be making things for. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's kind of a weird that's dynamic crazy. that isn't in a lot of other industries I can think of. Mm-hmm. It's divided. Divided is a good word. Yeah. To talk about the industry in general, it's very divided. Yeah. Um, but that's a good thing because that just brings competition. Competition uh, means better quality. Mm-hmm. And the end of the day, at the end of the day, but um, I I'm interested to see. Uh, I don't think anything this year is going to really happen to, you know, anything special with consoles. Yeah. Uh, of course, we we haven't really seen E3 yet, so E3 could bring about some, like, heavy hitter exclusives. Mm-hmm. Um, Halo 5 is this year, so that might make a difference. Bloodborne's coming out, actually, pretty soon. Yeah. That's, that's a PS4 exclusive. Bloodborne's cool and all. I like it, but <coughs> it's another game that's capped at 30 FPS. And yeah. it's not really using its using the technology, right? And it's it's nothing new. I mean, I'm not knocking it. It looks like a great game, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You like I said, it's not using the technology in any new interesting right, right, right. way. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's uh, I I'm it's a different form. We're talking about it, but I I hate remastered stuff, like especially stuff that just came out a few years ago. Yeah, that's the only thing like, I have a problem with. When if they... there if there's more than one console apart from when it originally released, that's mm-hmm. okay. But if it released like on 360 and it's coming out like now, like yeah, eh, that's a bit unnecessary. Well, and the 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 thing I liked was when like they were doing collections of games for the PS2 and like mm-hmm. really classic games like the Metal Gear Solid collection, Devil May Cry collection. Because they're introducing mm-hmm. it to a new audience. Like, the people who were That's playing true, yeah. a 360 or a PS3 towards the end of its lifespan, it's entirely likely that they didn't own a PS2 or a GameCube or whatever. And so right. it's giving them a cheaper way to acquire those games and be able to play them. Whereas with The Last of Us Remastered, pretty much anyone who adopted the PS4 that early yeah, probably no had a PS3. Yeah, no one missed The Last of Us in yeah. a year. Right. So. But uh, we'll, we'll save. We'll try. We'll try to save that for a different uh, discussion overall. Yeah. But um, I uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think there's anything big this year that was really gonna like change the fate of the current consoles. You know, nothing, nothing's gonna be huge. I don't think. But right. definitely, like I, I've said this before, I think VR is gonna be a big thing uh-huh. uh, in gaming in the next coming coming years or so. Right. Uh, it's interesting to see if you know anything's gonna happen there with with uh, you know Sony or Microsoft or. Uh-huh or even Nintendo. And that so, that could also be something that kind of shifts the dynamic because with VR, you have to have steady high frame rates or people will get sick. Right, like, right. Like, if I play a game at 30 FPS with a VR headset on, I will get sick. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if 
VR takes a front seat and that kind of brings the standard back up to 60 FPS with maybe some lower resolutions oh, yeah, or less yeah. pretty graphics. I'd be really interested to see what happens there. Yeah, I don't I don't doubt that. Like I f- I feel like I mean I feel if VR is a thing, then that's going to be the thing that dominates the market. And mm-hmm. Steam or Valve is already on top of that with their what Hive, I think it's called Hive. And then I mean the Oculus Rift has PC support, Oculus. obviously. And and I know Valve would be the one to push. They want they want to push the specs hard on their machines. Right. So the standard's going to change definitely uh-huh. um, uh, as far as quality goes. Like they're going to if games aren't in thirty frames, if most games aren't in thirty frame or. 60 frames this year, like, all, most of all games will be 60 frames and above next year. Yeah. Like, it's it's definitely... The, the bar's going to be set. Um, and I think that's going to be pretty interesting to see when it happens. Yeah. Gonna... And, well, the other thing is, it's becoming, it's becoming more of an argument now. Because I think mm, a lot of the reason yeah. 30 FPS started to become acceptable last generation was because a yeah. lot of people who own consoles didn't know better. Um, right. And now, now people are deciding what games to buy strictly off of... Frames per right, because because more people are coming to PC, they're seeing what advantages sixty frames has and how much better of an experience it is. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that I think could be a deciding factor in that is that YouTube now supports sixty FPS video. Yep. So, so even if you don't, anybody right, can see. even if you don't own a high quality gaming PC, you can see what it likes and see how much it enhances the experience. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's yeah. The, just the bars, the bars just aren't always raising so. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if, if people are making the decisions based off, you know, the quality of how it looks that, you know, frames per second, then obviously more people or less people are going to be buying the 30 frames games and that's going to shift the market uh, however, which way, uh-huh. and it's going to change it's, things are going to change mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, and we're, we'll, we're interested to see what the consoles do. I don't, I don't think anything big. I mean, I feel like what, uh, was it 2013 was the release of the consoles um, fall fall yeah, twenty thirteen. Yeah. Um, so we've been like a, what a year and a half. Yeah. Nothing really has happened. I don't think anything's really going to happen any again. Again. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure we'll get some good games, but yeah. eventually, maybe. But I'm yeah. I'm cautiously optimistic. I want to see new uses of this technology. I want to see devs kind yeah. of flex their muscles on the new, these new systems. But if things keep going the way they are, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, at least not on the consoles. Right. Um, which is which is sad because that's I, I grew up on consoles. I've not I've never had a big piece a good PC, so mm-hmm. I can't say PC Master Race. <laughs> right. But uh, I mean, soon enough I'll be PC Master Race because the consoles just just can't can't do it. Yeah. Not for especially not for like the pricing. That I mean, I get I get it's expensive, but. It's, they're they're the prices of computers nowadays. So. Yeah, they definitely are, and the games on PC are cheaper too. So if you if yeah, you yeah, buy a PC go. and like three new games, you're you've already made up the price mm-hmm. difference. Mm-hmm. It's 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 weird. The uh, uh, culture is shifting, so it's it's interesting to see. Uh, what, what console do you play on? I I still honestly I, I log into my 360. I've been playing Dragon Age on my 360. Uh, so. I play PC <laughs> and. Uh, lately, I've been kind of going back through my Wii library, actually. Um, nice, nice. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of games on there that got overlooked because people think it's all just crap shovelware. Mm-hmm. Which don't get me wrong, there is a lot of crap shovelware. <laughs> but there's also some really really cool games that people missed. So I've been kind of going through the Wii's library and picking stuff out like that. I keep I kept my Wii strictly for the few GameCube games I've kept, like Double mm-hmm. Dash and Melee and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but uh. That's that's I, I plug that up whenever. But yeah, I play on 360 and PC whenever. I don't I don't give a I don't give a hoot. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'd like to hear what you guys think about the current consoles. If if they're if you're satisfied, if you're not, um, if you are PC master race or not, <laughs> um, let us know in the comments below and uh, uh, be sure to stay tuned for more more forum. If there's something you want us to talk about, you know, let us know. Um, someone will pick it up and we'll, we could talk about it. Uh, then our next forum, well, I guess I have to I have to make this forum before the other one now. But the next <laughs> forum will be about remastered games, our opinions on them, because there's a lot of there's a lot of remastered games coming out nowadays, like yeah, co- collections and stuff. It's, Definitely, I'm I'm not a big fan, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So, <laughs> all right, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Reagan. Or, I'm Justin. <laughs> You're Justin. I'm Reagan. <laughs> yes, and until uh, next time. <laughs>